Hey, I've got 24 questions for 2024. Come on in. Question one, do you collect anything? I would probably say plants. I probably have more of those than pretty much anything else. All right, and question two, recent favorite TV show? Ooh, recently I've absolutely been loving the incredible Dr. Pohl Family Farm. Nan sent that one. Uh, as a family, we love Clone Wars though, so we've been doing a lot of Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, favorite book? I don't read, I'm not a big reader. I'll do Bible time, but I really don't do much of anything else. I have to plug it here. Our son wrote a book and I just finished reading it the uh, couple weeks ago. It's phenomenal. The paperback book is coming out soon. I've ordered that and I'm dying to sit down with the paper book and read it over again. So that has been absolutely my favorite lately. Question five, favorite song? Ooh, favorite song. I have been, uh, again, our oldest and our youngest totally did it, but Billy Joel scenes from an Italian restaurant have absolutely been my favorite song here lately. You want some tea? Yep. Uh, what is one thing that instantly makes your day a bit better? Ooh, um, I think it's just things that we have built. Um, having the animals, we have sheep and we just had a little lamb and we come over here and out of our kitchen window, we can see them down in the pasture and watching the little sheepies run around, especially that little lamb, absolutely like wins the day every single time. Pomegranate raspberry? Yeah. Uh, six, what is a personal goal that you have? Ooh, a personal goal for me, I think this year, especially with everything, um, all the growth we had on YouTube last year, hitting 100,000 subscribers is definitely one that um, I, hope to, I hope to hit this year. Mm -hmm. How about a family goal? Family goal this year is absolutely getting out to more NASCAR races. So that's what we're working on as a family, getting out there, getting to the racetrack. Last year we only made it once, so hopefully this year we can really up that. Mm -hmm. Hey, how do you waste time most often? Ooh, wasting time lately. Um, I'm supposed to be on resting more because I have foot surgery and so I'm not supposed to be up doing a bunch of stuff and so I never I very rarely do this but I downloaded one of those silly games on my phone and you like you're making a farm and like doing stuff it's ridiculous and that has absolutely been my time waster lately. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Southern California in the desert. And where do you live now? Now we live in the mountains of Western North Carolina which is very very different. And where do you wish that you lived? Ooh, I would love to go further into Western North Carolina, into the mountains more. Um, we have it, it has its pros and its cons, but if I could go anywhere, I would go even further out into the country. And when did you become a Christian? I really grew up in the church my whole life and kind of was always a professing Christian, but I would say that it was in my late 20s before I really truly got my life, like truly gave my my life to the Lord and kind of turned it around. You wanna come sit down with me? Mm-hmm. There you go. Thank you. Okay, what denomination are you? Um, none, we are non-denominational. Ooh, uh, greatest faith struggle. Hmm, greatest faith struggle? I would say sometimes it's just having the patience in in the times when you know God's doing something, you feel like something needs to happen, you need to move, you need something, and, and being patient to hear and truly see what God's desire and will is versus wanting to just like go powering through with what you think. Mm -hmm. What is one question you wish people would ask you less? Oh, one, <laughs> one question I wish people would ask me less. Why are you being so mean to Joyce Meyer and Beth Moore? I think when we had our video go viral and that was the one thing we get over and over. And it was just like <sighs> basic scriptural discernment. Um, so, and so that's when every time I get it, I go, oh, not another one. So that would be one I wish they had asked less. How about one question you wish people would ask you more? Ooh. Um, that is a good question. One thing that I wish people asked more, I think would be some of the deeper stuff, right? Um, I like talking about the deep stuff. I like, you know, kind of getting into it and really digging in and looking deeper at the, you know, the, the heart 
part of it, you know, the whys and getting in. And so I wish that, um, I wish that we got more of that. 17. If given the opportunity, what book would you write? I, we, we kind of shared our story. My husband and I, we've been together for 23 years now, um, married for almost 20. And we were sharing with a friend, you know, that we had met and just kind of, she was asking questions. How did we get to where we are and being, you know, married as teenagers and having a kid and kind of all the things that we've gone through and, um, kind of talked about the idea of how neat it would be to have a book of our story, just because it is such a, just a wild ride it, with an amazing testimony to the Lord and his goodness. And so I think if I ever actually got the time to focus and put it together, writing our story would be really neat. 18. What is your definition of success? I think my definition of success would be true comfort and contentment. I think that we live in a world that is always telling us to go for something else. And you know, you have millionaires that don't feel successful because they're not billionaires and billionaires weren't trillionaires, right? And everybody's always chasing that next thing. And so I think that success isn't defined by what you have or how much you have, but it's that true feeling of just total contentment and comfort in exactly what it is that God has put into your life. 19, most applicable Bible advice or biblical advice. Um, absolutely. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is one of my favorite books in scripture across the board anyways. And I think when you're talking about like true applicable advice of like day in and day out, you can apply to it, apply it to your life and just get so much out of it. Got to go with Ecclesiastes. 20. When was the last time you cried in front of someone? So I'm not a person who cries. I very rarely am. Um, it just, it's not something that I really am able to do. And I was actually doing a live stream with my friend and podcast co-host. And she asked me a question and we we're talking about it. And it just hit on something really special to me. And I lost it and ended up totally crying. And that would, that would be the last time. And yeah, that doesn't happen um, very often, but it did live on a podcast for a whole bunch of people to see. Uh, 21, how do you show people that you love them? For me, I am definitely an um, actions person. Like for me, I show my love by doing things for you, right? So for me, it's like keeping the house clean, doing things, like making sure you have everything you need and doing actions for you is how I try to, you know, show love. 22, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Ooh, 10 years. Um, I would love to see that, you know, Lord willing, the ministry has continued to grow, um, that we own a piece of property and can not only have our little homestead and family life, but it could be a space that others could come and gather as well. That would be really special to me. 23, what's the favorite, what's your favorite thing to share with other people? Hmm. I feel like it's, it's the simplicity and beauty of life when you truly know God. I think for so long in my life, I focused on trying to pursue all the things that like the world tells you to pursue and all the things that are so important and um, really coming to understanding just a scriptural foundation of everything and seeing how beautiful and wonderful life is each and every day when you truly live in the Lord, regardless of your circumstances and situations you're going through it's wonderful. It's amazing. And I would stop anybody anywhere and want to talk about that. And lastly, uh, what is a non-essential item that you can't live without? It's totally ridiculous. And yes, absolutely non-essential, but I got introduced to my rocket fuel nail stuff a couple months ago and I am obsessed. I keep it over there next to the couch. So every evening I've been sitting down and I put a coat on my nail. And for the first time in the past, like seven years, I have the strongest, healthiest nails in the whole wide world. And it is my favorite thing ever and totally ridiculous, but it's something that makes me happy each and every evening when I sit down and put that on. Thank you. That's 24. Perfect. Let's enjoy our tea.